Calls for justice and protests continue after the arrest of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Prosecutors charging him with third-degree murder and manslaughter. But my next guest feels those charges are not strong enough. Joining me now is Lawrence Jones, a Fox News contributor whose comments have been so important um, over this past week, Lawrence. And you join us here on the Saturday after that horrific uh, display of the rioting, the looting, the uprising. Uh, yesterday, and let me get your thoughts on where you think things are today. Do you think that tonight is also going to be another one of those very distressing ones like we saw last night? Yeah, Dana, and thank you so much for your uh, excellent reporting on this matter. You've been really at the forefront of this. Um, as you know, as we've been co-hosting the Five together this week, I told you that just by my experience of reporting on protests and being in the, the thick of Baltimore, Ferguson, that the, the bad actors were people that weren't from the area. Um, this wasn't something that I just made up. It's just a matter of experience and being there on the ground. And as you know, the mayor and the governor, as the records are starting to come out, they told us that all the people that they arrested were people from out of state. Uh, that's what's going on mm -hmm. right now. You have people that have their own agenda, that want to, that are anarchists, that are part of Antifa, that are, are professional paid protesters. Um, I know this because as I would go to city to city, I would see some of the same faces. These people, jobs mm -hmm. are to agitate and to stir up hatred. Um, there are a lot of peaceful protesters that are on the ground. And so what needs to happen is that the governor really needs to establish control. There has to be a clear separation uh, between the people that are exercising constitutional uh, protected protest and the anarchists. The people that are there on the ground that are from the community, they don't want to set up the businesses that they go to on a daily day basis on fire. It's the people that have absolutely no connection to the community that are seeking uh, to uh, uh, set those places on fire. And so what the governor needs to do, I mean, th this is a fourth chance. I mean, this happened Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is Saturday night. And it seems to be that there is no control. There is no uh, coordination that is taking place. And that's problematic. Um, listen to what Governor Waltz said today. Destruction of black businesses and black infrastructure. We have destroyed landmarks of the nation's largest indigenous communities that ripped a hole in the soul of a people that have been oppressed from the minute we became a state. Lawrence, so, it, you know, I talked to a friend last night in Brooklyn. She went out a little bit to see what was going on, and when she came back and she sent me a text, she said, these people are not from Brooklyn. These are not people that are from our neighborhood or from these. So yeah. I, I, how can we figure out, you know, where are they coming from, where they're getting their leadership, where is their you know, source of funding? Because that also, in addition to law enforcement, it seems like that also has to be addressed. Yeah, it does. I mean, you, you can go on social media and, and look at the chat, uh, and it'll tell you where they're organizing these protests or riots that they're doing. Um, it, it, talk to the community leaders. That's why relationships within the community are so crucial, because if you really understand who the organizers in the communities are, they will tell you the peoples that are outsiders. Um, because they don't want their movement uh, destroyed either. I mean, they, these the, the, the main people that are here mm -hmm. are legitimate protesters that feel like there is injustice and there is uh, going on in this country and they're speaking out against it. And they don't want that message to be clouded by people that are agitators and looters, that people have uh, their own agenda. And so if we were just uh, build those relationships and talk to those community leaders, I mean, I have a plethora of sources that are on the ground that are giving me intel from city to city because there are real leaders in the community and they want to see change happen, but they also don't want to see the businesses that they have helped build, that they have coordinated with mayors and governors and even the White House to get opportunities on and finances uh, to build these businesses. They don't want to see them burnt down. And so it's going to take basic community policing and relationships 
uh, to get that done. And that is the same relationship that is going to help build inroads in the community, walking down the street with the community so that you can figure out when there is crime in the community. As someone that has majored in criminal justice, that has been an officer of the court working in, in the juvenile department, that is critical to get crime off the street as well. And so, again, this is going to take time. Mm -hmm. This is going to take relationship. It's going to take some hard work, but it's going to be beneficial in the long run. Lawrence, we're looking at video right now. You can see people gathering in Minneapolis. But as Steve Harrigan said that these were mainly, as you were saying, these are people being really peaceful and, and trying to get their voices heard. Um, in the last few seconds that I have with you, you know, if you had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with some of these folks, if they were listening to you, what would you want to tell them about how better to seek justice than the riot rioting tonight? I would tell them I understand their pain. Pain. I understand it. I'm a young black male. I've experienced some of the same encounters that they've experienced. But I also know that it takes strategy to change the system. And, you know, we'll talk about this later in the show. I don't agree with the charges and all that. But we have to honor the memory of Mr. Floyd. And he would not want you guys out there burning down the city. He would want you peacefully protesting. He would want you getting involved, getting involved in local politics, learning who your DA is, learning uh, the prosecutor's office so when corruption takes place, you can vote those people out. But right now, the protesters, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, the looters, uh, aren't exercising that strategy. They have their own uh, 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 agenda. The pro peaceful protesters, I support you. I stand with you. Honor the memory. Don't destroy the memory of Mr. Floyd. Lawrence Jones, I can't wait for this uh, social distancing to be over so I can give you a big hug. Uh, thank you.